Hi everyone, this is Venkatesh from Naresh I Technologies. So, in the last video, we have been discussing about defining thread. And so, the defining thread in Java can be done in two ways by extending from java.lang.thread class or implementing from java.lang.runnable interface. In the last class and the last video, I shown some theoretical and practical implementation of creating or defining thread by using thread class. So, in this video, I am discussing about java.lang.runnable interface. I have been concentrating on java.lang.runnable. So, let me make a title here. Defining thread by implementing Java dot lang dot runnable. So, in this video, I am concentrating on defining thread by implementing Java dot lang dot runnable interface. The model will be looking same. And so, when are you want to define a thread? I am taking one user defined class, user defined class and this user defined class is implemented from runnable. Implemented from runnable the user defined class must be implemented from runnable and the runnable is coming from java dot lang coming from java dot lang and the runnable will have only one method that is run method will have only one method that is run method. Now, this run method must be declared within the user defined class means the user defined class must be declared with run method which is overriding method of this runnable interface. So, here we are writing public void run. So, whatever the logic needed the logic we are recording here the model is looking same now. In the previous video user defined class extended from java dot lang dot thread class internal to the library this java dot lang dot thread class implemented from runnable, but here directly the user defined class which is my thread is implemented from java dot lang dot runnable, but this runnable interface is having only one method. So, whatever the methods available within the interface they are known as abstract methods the method which is declared without method body we are calling it as abstract method this run method must be implemented here. So, when are if we implement here now we are having a body to this run method the required logic we are writing here. So, if you observe clearly here start method is not available in multi threading process the start method is going to play a role why means when or if I use start method start method will register the thread within the thread scheduler and creates one separate thread stack within the java stack and the run method is copied onto the stack for execution the diagrammatic representation we have seen in java dot lang dot thread. So, this process here now in this diagram we cannot see start method here. So, now I am creating object whenever I create object for this user defined class I am creating object. Now, I created one object whenever I created object here the method is binded to the object. So, the run method is available here run method is available here. Now, this is the object created for the user defined class. Now, if I use obj dot run it becomes a normal program for execution, but I want to execute this program as threading program. Whenever I want to execute like a threading program, I must take the support of start method, but the start method is not available within the runnable interface. The start method is available within the java dot lang dot thread class. So, whenever I want to bring the start method now, I must create object for thread class. See, I am taking one 
thread class. This thread class is available from java.lang available for java.lang. Now, I am creating object here. The name of this object is t now. I am creating object t now. While object creation, the reference of this object is binded here. While object creation, the reference of this user defined class object is binded here. Nothing but in syntactically, while object creation, I will pass the obj as parameter. Whenever I pass this obj as parameter, it will be copied onto the parameterized constructor of java.lang.thread class. So, finally, the reference of user defined class object is binded into the object of java.lang.thread class. In java.lang.thread class, many methods are there, but among that, we need what now? Start method. Imagine the start method came here. The non static methods or instance methods binded to objects. We know that concept. So, the start method is available here. According to the threading concept, according to the threading concept now, I will go for Java stack. I will go for Java stack. So, in the Java stack, I had one stack here. I am calling it as main stack. In the main stack, always public static void main starts the execution by loading. The public static void main loaded, the stack we are calling it as main stack. In the main stack, we had object creation like this thread obj equal to new my thread. Now, I have to create object for thread class. Now, thread t is equal to new thread of obj. Means, I am passing this obj as parameter. Once I passed obj as parameter, now t object is having the reference of obj. Now, using this t now, I can access t dot start. I am having a call start method call. So, whenever I call now t dot start, I am using t dot start. Whenever I say t dot start, according to the multi threading process, start means register the thread within the thread scheduler and create one stack here. So, this stack we are calling it as thread stack. We are calling it as thread stack. Now, the thread stack is created. Now, whatever the thing I done here, t dot start now means what? The start method activates this run method. Nothing but t dot start will run this run method. So, automatically this run method is copied onto the thread stack. So, now the execution will be here. So, finally, the diagrammatic representation is nothing but the user defined class must be implemented from java.lang.runnable interface, but this runnable interface is having only one method that is run method and this run method is abstract method. Now, you have to declare this run method within the user defined class and whatever the logic required for your program must be declared within this body of run method. Now, if I create object for this user defined class, the run method is available here. But in multi threading process, whenever you want to execute run method, we take the support of start method. But the start method is not available here. Why it is not available? So, it is not available in java.lang.start method and it is not available here because we are not yet declared here. Now, I must take the support of built in start method from your java.lang.thread class. Whenever I want to take the support of built in start method of java.lang.thread class, then I will create object for java.lang.thread class here. Whenever I created object here, the start method is available here. But while object creation, I am binding the reference of user defined class object onto this object creation. So, finally, the reference is available here. Now, internally, if I call t dot start automatically, it registers the thread within the thread scheduler. 
one stack is created, thread stack is created within the Java stack area and the run method is activated for execution and copied onto thread stack and the thread is executed like multi thread process. This is the concept of defining thread by using or by implementing Java dot lang dot runnable. This is the diagrammatic representation. Why we go with this kind of diagrammatic representation to represent that the start method of your built in method available from Java dot lang dot thread must be used. So, let me show this concept by writing one small program. So, let me show this concept of defining thread by using Java dot lang dot runnable interface. So, the user defined class. I had one my thread for so user defined class. Now this class must be declared with so one class here user defined class must be implemented with runnable interface and this class must be declared with one method known as public void run. Now which is implemented from here runnable. implements java dot lang dot runnable dot run already said no. In Java dot lang dot runnable, we had one method known as run method. The run method must be implemented. So, we are constructing body to that. Whatever the logic is needed, we are writing within this run method. So, this is step 1 and this is step 2. So, now we are creating object for user defined class. I am creating object for user defined class. Now, whenever I create object for user defined class, this object will have only the method of public void run method, but it will not have any start method. So, whenever I want to activate the start method, I am creating object for thread class. Thread t is equal to new thread of obj. I am passing this obj as parameter. So, obj holding the reference of object which is created for my thread my thread for user defined class. The reference I am passing as parameter while creating object for thread class. Now, finally, I created one object. The object reference is available on this t now. This object is created for the java dot lang dot thread class. So, by using this, I am going to activate t dot start. So, whenever I activated t dot start internally, it activates the run method for execution. So, whatever the logic here I am taking one loop. I am displaying normal value 1 now. So, here I took one loop which is running from 1 to 5 I am displaying I value. So, whenever I want to see this thread correctly I will take the support of sleep method. So, the sleep method is used to stop the execution temporarily it is stopping the thread in execution. So, this is the syntax of logic and here logic is nothing but printing 1 to 5. I created one thread to print 1 to 5. This thread is created with the runnable method. So, let me execute and show it this. See there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. It is executing like this now. The meaning of this program is nothing but whatever the user defined class is there, the user defined class must be implemented from java dot lang dot runnable, but runnable is having only one method run method. We are implementing the run method within the user defined class. If I create object for user defined class, I can have only public void and run method available within the object of user defined class. This object reference I am going to pass as parameter while creating object for thread class. Sir, why you are binding this object as reference? This reference into thread class means whenever I want to execute this like a threading program, we have to execute this like a threading program, then we need a start method. Start method is available from the java dot lang dot thread class. Then I am passing the reference while creating object for thread class. So, that we can have a start method within this the object of thread. So, by using that start method, we are going to activate the run method. 
So, I used t dot start. Whenever if I said t dot start, automatically the thread will be registered within the thread scheduler and that separate thread stack is created and the run method is copied onto the stack for execution. This is the definition or defining thread by using runnable. So, let me run this by creating one more thread. I am not changing this user defined class here using thread t2 I am using. So, this indicates t1 now new thread of OBJ. So, I created t1 thread, I created t2 thread. Now, I am creating two threads, two threads are acting on the same object now OBJ and OBJ two threads are acting on the same object. When these two threads are acting on the same object, the same task, task is what? A smallest work done printing from 1 to 5. Printing from 1 to 5 will be done by two threads now. One thread T1, one thread T2 means what? T1, T2 must be executed simultaneously means what? Executing T1, T2, T1, T2 that is called simultaneous. How it is possible? Simultaneous means whenever I say t1 dot start one separate thread stack is created whenever I say t2 dot start one more separate stack is created means what if two threads are uh, called now if I say t1 dot start and t2 dot start two thread stacks are created these two thread stacks are executed simultaneously. So, let me run it and show it 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 and 5 5 means what t1 t2 t1 t2 t1 t2 t1 t2 means what thread 1 thread stack and i is equal to 1 1 less than 5 true come inside one thread is executed then the control goes to next stack and executes i is equal to 1 thread comes to next one i is equal to 2 i is equal to 2 i is equal to 3 i is equal to 3 means what executing simultaneously executing multiple threads simultaneously we are calling it as multi threading process. What is the meaning of simultaneous at a time? What is the meaning of at a time? Now, the two stacks are created in the Java stack area and the two stacks are executed at a time. At a time means both are available within the Java stack area for execution that concept we are calling it as at a time simultaneously it is running T1, T2 and so on. This concept we are calling it as multi threading concept. When this more than one thread trying to act on the same object, then the application will be in under unsafe state. In unsafe state of an application generates wrong results or inconsistent results. To overcome that, they introduced with thread synchronizations in your concept. So, in the next video, we are going to come with thread synchronization. So, whenever the more than one thread is trying to act on the same object, then the application will be running under unsafe state. So, the unsafe state must be converted into safe state by implementing a concept known as thread synchronization. So, we are going to see by the next video what is thread synchronization. Thank you.